Hello everybody, welcome to Scribbles with Jonathan. I'm your host, Jonathan Rector. You can check out my website and my work at jonathanrector.com. And if you guys are on Twitter, you can follow me there as well, at ArtByJar. Um, I apologize if my uh, voice is coming off a little weird, or... Um, garbled or things like that. Uh, I think I'm coming out with a little bit of a cold. But uh, I wanted to do a real quick uh, recorded video here for you guys um, for a couple of reasons. One, uh, this program here, Manga Studio, I'm sure a lot of you guys are uh, familiar with. Uh, it's actually on sale right now, and I'm not sure when it ends, but uh, I, went up and, I went and picked it up. It's $100 for the EX version, and the EX version is usually $300. Um, so it's pretty cool, and one of the things is it's going to force me to learn this program a little bit better. But check that out. I'll put the little link in the underbar of where you can get it. Uh, and if I if I still have the link to the sale, if the sale's still up, you can click that and check that out as well. Um, okay, uh, <laughs> what did I what did I want to show you guys here? Uh, there's two things. Uh, this one is a project I'm working on, and uh, the name it doesn't really matter what the name is. I'll show you guys that later. But what what I was what I'm doing right now is I'm in the thumbnail stage stage of uh, of production and uh, what's really cool about Manga Studio here I'll actually minimize this I'll just show you guys really quickly uh, uh, that's not the right one here we go let me just click up here on story and I'll just shrink this up so you can see it I I'm not going to go into each one of these ones because I'm not sure if I'm allowed to show you guys exactly um, so if you guys wanted to zoom in to get pixelated go right ahead there's not too much information here for you guys to be aware of um, what's going on um, but what's really cool is in Mega Studio here. Um, you can actually make what's called pages in stories, just like in a comic book. And what you're looking at right here is a, is a, a story. And you can put in as many pages as you want right from the get go. Or if you wanted to add pages, that's no problem. I'm not going to go into a robust detail about that. What I'm going to show you guys is the production of how I would do each one of these little thumbnails. And uh, but what's really cool is within this story, no matter what image I double click on, it'll automatically pop up instantly. Um, Let's see what here. I'll just double click this one to show you guys. So bang, it's it's right here. And at any time I can go right back to the story. Uh so it's really cool. Um I'm able to just move things around. Let's say I wanted these two flip like that. Or maybe I want this down here. You know, maybe I want it right over there. Okay, uh it should work. Oh, I'm getting a little error message there. There you go. So you can move it very quickly, um, which is really cool for pacing and things like that if you wanted to change how your story's going and they're all numbered and all that cool stuff. But really cool feature I just wanted to include that um, so let me just minimize this and bring back up the new document I had so when I do a thumbnail you guys can't see the screen or the uh, document for the script that I have off screen um, however what I do is to keep the resources down and to keep it more like a gesture uh, I, I kind of very roughly like I'll zoom in and it gets very pixelated here uh, it is in a bitmap but when it's this small I, I can't do a lot of details so I've already filled in what's going to be here and to you guys, this is probably a lot of nonsense. Um, but I'm going to show you the next step that I like to do here. So now that I have it here, if I zoom out, you can you can see how small it is to the actual uh, final image. This is actually to scale. Uh, once it is in print or web or whatever this will be used for, this right here is the actual cutoff and the, the bleed and the live area. Um, so over here on the right, we got the two layers. Uh, I have one for the panels that I've chosen and then one for the content in the panels. Um, once I'm satisfied with it, I just hit Control e and I'm not sure if on a Mac it'd be a little bit different, but uh, so what it's doing is it's merging the layers. I usually don't name this because it's just a thumbnail. That's okay. Um, color modes black and white. That's okay. Uh, if it does show up black and white like this on Mega Studio in the layers at the top, there's this color view, and you can click that. I believe you can actually click inside the color here. Let me see if I can um, tone display settings. Maybe it's double click that. I just want to see something real quick. Yep, see, that's actually really cool. You can go ahead, you can change the color. Um, most people just use it for that um, that blue line. And I don't know where, where the blue was that I had. Was it this color blue? Ah, good enough. Anyway, so I have it there. Uh, next, what we're going to do is we're going to go Control T for transform. Uh, actually, that's not right. <laughs> What did I have it? Is it? Maybe I have something selected here that shouldn't be selected. Um, control T. Move and transform. No, okay, that is right. It's just, uh, for some reason, it's moving all my things all over the place. There we go. So control T for transform. I have no idea why that was starting to hiccup. Um, and what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to increase the size um, to my live area 
pretty rough. You know, doesn't have to be too perfect. It is just a thumbnail. I'm, we're going to be uh, tightening it up in a second here. Looks good. Click OK. And uh, let me just get rid of that property stuff there. So there we go. We have it. Uh, looks, you know, like a jumbled mess. No problem. And usually what I'll do here is I'll just click, knock down the opacity. And I'm going to click New Layer. And this one I don't name, again, because it's a thumbnail. But just for you guys, I'll name this one... Um, tight thumbnail and we're good there uh, and I pick this pen brush not the actual brush I, I don't really care for that one too much but this pen brush and um, oops it looks like my let me just hit some F keys there we go uh, I want my pen tool there I don't know why it's messing around like this normally it doesn't uh, excuse me, so I have that, uh, but what we need first are panels. So what I'll do up here is again click a new layer, and as opposed to the layer type, <clears throat> don't click raster. That's going to be for your art. You can do vector and all that cool stuff. What we want is not a ruler layer, but a panel ruler layer. So we'll click that, everything else grays out, click OK, and right there it's going to make a new one. And you can kind of see this blue guide that we've already had to our live area. Now if you move over here to your panel ruler cutter, uh, it might be create panel normally. Uh, just click and hold to change it to panel. Panel. Now, no matter what I do, anywhere I put this, as you can see, it's going to automatically cut that vector. Um, as opposed to if you do the same thing but you hold shift, it'll make it straight, which is actually really cool. You're going to see how cool this is in a second. Um, your little uh, navigation bar will come up here. You can actually change the width. Um, the border width, vertical interval, and all that cool stuff. I've already done all that stuff for myself. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is the, the guides you can kind of see I've already put in there. So I'm just going to knock that one in, knock that one, that one, and that one. And we're pretty much good. So now that we're good, you just right click on the ruler, click rasterize layer. Do I want to keep the original layer? No. I don't need to keep that with what we just had. So as you can see, it just blacked all the borders that I wanted perfectly. And that's what rasterizing does. And it'll give you a brand new ruler or panel ruler layer right there. What you're going to want to do is move that above all of your um, layers. So it actually, if I zoom in here, it actually cuts out and keeps your gutters in between the panels here, keeps them nice and empty. And it doesn't matter how much I draw, which you'll see in a second, um, because it'll actually just white it out. So now I'm going to click on the tight thumbnail. Let me just look at the time. Uh, we're about 7:40. Uh, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to do one panel here, just so you guys can see it. We'll do um. I don't know, we got this kind of cool bad guy here. Uh, this is a thumbnail, so uh, I should say everything you've seen me do so far, once I go into a tight line work stage, like you throwing your actual tight pencils over top and things, I would do the exact same thing and just lower the opacity again. That way it's getting tighter and tighter until you're ready, ready to get confident with the inks. And again, um, all, that, all that I'm doing here is uh, sending this to an editor, so it doesn't have to be turbo tight, you know, as long as he understands what he's looking at, according to the script as well. Excuse me, so we got our, our brush there. Oh, I should show you the, I, I just use a regular brush. Um, I turn the stroke in out, stroke in and stroke out. Uh, I don't even have any of that turned on. The size is two millimeters just for this, and I don't have the correction on. Uh, I, I Actually, here, I'll actually just show you guys one thing. Uh, I was trying to find out for a long time how to do a straight line, like let's say you're doing buildings or something. And let's say I wanted to do a straight line of a barn. Like that, that's, you know, this looks pretty rough. That's pretty gross. Like it doesn't look very confident. If you actually turn your correction all the way up to the max, uh, it'll take a lot of the jiggle out of your line. And it actually kind of turns it into straight. It's not perfectly straight, like you can see right there. Uh, but um, it helps big time. So if anybody's looking how to make straight lines, bang, that's how I figured it out. Uh, okay, let me just erase all this stuff. Okay, now in this panel here, uh, whoops, it's supposed to be the bad guy kind of looking like, you know, he, he's winning over the good guy. Uh, so, you know, I like to keep it nice and light and rough. Uh, the rendering's really cool in Manga Studio, I'll give it that for sure. i really scrunch up his nose. It's got like a big kind of troll nose, and uh, since this is a thumbnail, I'm not I'm not worrying about uh, keeping things uh, tight. Again, it's just to relay an emotion or a pose or an idea that you have. 
I'm gonna give him a little cheekbone there. Um, I really wanna give him a really nasty kind of smile. He is talking, maybe make him look like he's a little laughing. Give him some sharp teeth. Uh, dudes and chicks with sharp teeth smiling usually are, you know, pretty bad bad dudes. And as you see we're just roughing it in there. Don't need the shadows that much. And I'm just gonna knock in the jaw. His head goes up. He's actually got some uh, elvish kind of ears. And uh, so I'm going to hit my lasso tool because I think this is too low. I'm just going to make a highlight around it. And right here, I think it's move and transform. Just gonna, whoops. Click that guy. I don't really... Why does that keep going there? That's, <laughs> that's going to bug me. I'm going to move his ear up a little bit. I'm just going to rotate it too. I'll hit OK. It's all good. You can go back there. I'll get rid of the selection. Bring out my eraser here just to clean this up. We don't need this over in this panel. Uh, like I said before, as you notice, in between this gutter, I was drawing, um, but it automatically blocks it out, which is uh, really cool. I do that in, uh, when I uh, do my comic work in Photoshop. I usually use do something very similar to this, but it's much faster in Manga Studio, uh, without question. So all I'm doing here is I'm just going to add some black, trying to get some emotion in there. At least the emotion I'm thinking of, because uh, when I, once I get time to actually do this page, it might be months before I get back here. Uh, and I'll, I'm going to have a whole different vision and mindset once I tackle the page. But as long as I can relay some of that information now, excuse me, hopefully a lot of it will retain according to the script and uh, when we need it. And you totally don't have to do all this, you know, shading and stuff. I'm not really sure I like this eye. I don't think it looks evil enough. I'm just going to black it out. Uh, over here on the left Omega Studio, that's your default color. And then white. Uh, ever since going digital, I, I will say um, being able to draw in white is is uh, phenomenal for me anyway. I'll fill that. There we go. Just to add some more spookiness, I guess. But anyway, yeah, I guess that'll be it. I'm just going to zoom out here. Oops. No, I don't want to save that. Uh, so there you go. You can see exactly what's going on, uh, how this would work. Uh, excuse me. And, um... Yeah, I guess that's it for now. Uh, so you guys, again, hope you enjoyed the video. Check out Manga Studio if you haven't. I believe there's a free demo you can try out. Uh, everything I've done right here isn't any different than the uh, I'm using the EX which is a little bit more expensive one the debut version what I've done here so far uh, you can totally do in the debut and the EX so feel free to just try this program out I'd highly recommend it and, uh, recommend checking out some other YouTube videos that's how I'm finding a lot of my information out um, but what I plan on doing like I said since I've picked the program up myself uh, I'm actually going to release some content videos like this as I find it you know little cool things that are happening throughout the day so thanks so much for watching uh, take care uh, we'll see you next time keep reading comics and keep making comics you guys. Bye.